Douglas Ross, you say the next five-year parliament should be a recov about recovery, not referendum. What's your plan for it? Well, it's about protecting jobs, so that's why we put forward our plans for job security councils, for retrain to rebuild grants to help people upskill to get back into work. It's about investing in education, recruiting 3,000 additional teachers over the next parliament. It's about investing in the NHS. We've set out plans for £2 billion additional support for the NHS over the next parliament. It's about rolling out full fibre broadband uh, over the next parliament as well. So all policies that I think people can see directed to secure our recovery, but I don't believe we will be able to do that if there's a threat of another independence referendum hanging over us. And you're promising to build 40,000 homes for social rent in the next parliament. You do know why there's a shortage of socially rented housing, don't you? Yep, yeah, but this is the most ambitious plan for uh, social housing uh, building since devolution. Uh, and this is why we're taking it forward. It is you know ambitious. You know why there's not been as much? Well, it's, beca it's because of the right to buy, which was introduced by the Thatcher government. Yeah. And, you know, it's sold off more almost half a million council houses in Scotland alone. Yes, but there's been a long time since the start of devolution to have been building social housing in Scotland, and that hasn't happened, which well, is why, why Scottish... Why would they have done it if they had to sell it off? Which is why Scottish Conservatives are prioritising that in this election to ensure we do actually have ambitious plans to prioritise building social housing in Scotland over the next five years. But they wouldn't have done it if they had to sold them off, sell them off, would they? But that policy got many people onto the housing ladder for the very first time and it was a policy that many people benefited from at the time. So are you no longer in favour of the right to buy then? Well, what I'm saying is we have to ensure we have got the properties here in Scotland now to um, meet the demand that is clearly there and that's why it is the most ambitious plan for social housing building in Scotland since devolution. That's what people want to see and that's also part of our recovery. It's about providing homes but also providing all the jobs connected to that construction plan as well. So are you no longer in favour of the right to buy then? Uh, no, absolutely. It was uh, a good policy. It is a good policy to help people onto the property ladder. But it's also right that we so look... So just let me clarify. Are you or aren't you in favour of the right to buy? I I'm in favour of the right to buy. It gets people onto the property ladder. But we also have to ensure there are enough properties, uh, enough building of... Uh, affordable homes, social housing here in Scotland, and that hasn't happened. And that's not because of Thatcher's policies from the 1970s and the 1980s. That's because over the last 14 years, the SNP Scottish Government haven't built enough houses and enough homes here in Scotland. Well, this, the right to buy was only scrapped in 2016. I mean, in the last couple of years, there's actually been more homes for social rent built in Scotland than the whole of England. Yeah, but <laughs> I know a lot of people want to compare with England. What we're looking England's at here, bigger. what we're looking at here, is what we can do in Scotland, what we can do in the Scottish Parliament, in Scottish politics over the next five years, and that's why our ambitious plans are the right way forward for Scotland. So you want to build 40,000 homes for social rent, but you're also willing to sell them off. It's a policy that helps people get onto the housing ladder. It's helped people across Scotland, across the United Kingdom. And I think we want to do as much as possible to get people onto that first step of the housing ladder. You say that an SNP majority will lead to another independence referendum. The Prime Minister says he'll block another independence referendum. Who do we believe? Well, unfortunately, it doesn't matter what the Prime Minister or the UK government say, because Nicola Sturgeon and the SNP, in their 11-point plan for another independence referendum, have said they will go ahead regardless whether they get a Section 30 order from the UK government or not. So that's the threat. That's what's hanging over us. That will put our recovery on the back foot when I want to focus on the re recovery going forward. You can't do both. You can't have a recovery, protecting people's jobs, rebuilding Scotland after the pandemic, and also have a referendum. And Nicola Sturgeon has said she wants that referendum and the campaign in the next couple of years during Scotland's recovery. So the leader of the Scottish Conservatives is saying it doesn't matter what the Prime Minister says. No, I'm saying the SNP... That's SM what you say? Yeah, because that's what the SNP are saying. The SNP are saying they will go ahead yes. with a referendum regardless. So they are not interested in what the Prime Minister says, despite Nicola Sturgeon previously saying that the 2014 referendum with so a you Section don't think 30 he could order... stop another referendum then? I'm saying they will go you, ahead. Do, do you think he could stop another he referendum? He cannot stop a wildcat illegal referendum if that's what the SNP yeah, are determined what are to do. Well, that's they are not what no, they're, they're not. They're proposing to have, uh, they, they're aiming for, they say, the gold standard. They're aiming for the Section 30 order. He can say no to that. And if they don't get a Section 30 order, despite that being the gold standard, that's what I was going on to say. Nicola Sturgeon said the referendum in 2014 was the gold standard of referendums. They've also said in their 11 point plan they'll go ahead with another referendum anyway, in the middle of our recovery from this pandemic. He would presumably challenge that in court, wouldn't he? Well, yes, but why do we need to go through that? Why do we need to take this into the courts? Why do we need to have that? threat? Why do we need to 
have people worried about their jobs, worried about employment, businesses oh. considering investment in Scotland, and all the negativity surrounding another referendum campaign, if we could just put that off the table, stop the SNP getting a majority, stop another okay. referendum like people did but if they do five get, years ago by voting Scottish if, Conservatives. If they do get a majority, it means that people want another referendum. Well, people have to be really clear that a vote for the SNP is a vote for another independence referendum. That is what they are taking forward. It's not their plans for Scotland, and if they are or it's clear not on the, that, the record. But if, but if they are clear about that, then shouldn't they be allowed to have that? I don't want another referendum. I'm not asking I, you if you want I, it or well, not. I know you don't want another referendum. You're the leader of the Scottish Conservative and Unionist Party. We know you don't want another referendum. Yeah. But what if the people of Scotland want another referendum? Well, the people of Scotland have an opportunity to stop that. They can stop that. They also that. have the opportunity to actually vote for it. And I'm asking you, what happens if they vote for it? Well, they voted in an independence referendum just seven years ago. But they're voting in three weeks' time in a Scottish Parliament election. What if they vote for a party, the SNP, or the Greens even, for that matter, but what if they vote for a party that promises them a referendum? Well, I'm saying vote for parties that are. will stop what that. And the only, party, the only party that can stop another SNP majority, their plans for another divisive independence referendum are the Scottish Conservatives, the same party that stopped it five years ago when people supported the Scottish Conservatives on the party list vote can do it again this year in 2021 by stopping an SNP majority again. Is the union based on consent and a partnership of equals? Yes, that's how our family of four nations work together. And we've seen that during this pandemic, when the UK furlough scheme has protected jobs here in Scotland, England, Wales and Northern Ireland, when the vaccination scheme that's being rolled out okay. is protecting the most vulnerable in our society and more than 2.6 million people in Scotland have already had the first so dose what, of the vaccine. What, what if the people of Scotland withdraw that consent then? In what way? Well, if they vote for a party that wants to hold another independence referendum, then vote for independence in that referendum. Right. They've withdrawn consent for the union. Would you just not allow that to happen? Well, I'm encouraging people not to support are, the SNP. But... And you wouldn't expect me, Colin, in fairness, I don't think you would expect me to determine the outcome of an election before a single vote has been cast. So but what I'm trying to do is say to the people of Scotland, we can put that debate to one side. We can say there shouldn't be a focus on a referendum. There should be a focus on the recovery. But the only way we can do that is to vote for the strongest party to stop the SNP. Okay. And across Scotland, that's the Scottish Conservative. So what's your vision for the, the future of a devolved Scottish Parliament? Would you devolve more powers? I think we should use the powers that we currently but have. Would you so, devolve more powers? So at the moment, no. I think we have got powers here in Scotland that are not being used. We've already seen on Social Security that the SNP called for more powers and then handed them back to Westminster because they couldn't set up a scheme to deal with Social Security quickly enough. So let's focus on using the powers here in Scotland so is now. So this as far as devolution goes? No. No, I'm saying that the Scotland Acts of uh, 2001, 2005, I think, uh, and 2015 have all looked to increase the powers to the Scottish Parliament. But now we should look at actually using the powers we have here at the moment to better influence the lives of people across Scotland. Now, when you became Conservative leader, you said that you wanted to be First Minister. Is that still your ambition? I think everyone uh, in Scottish politics would seek to aspire to the highest office. Is but it I would also this election? Well, well, what I would also say, Colin, is if that's not the role people have planned for me, then I will do whatever the people of Scotland uh, think I should do after the election. But again, that will be up to people in a few weeks' time when they cast their votes. But do you think you could be First Minister? I, I think. Look, look at the polls just now. It looks like Nicola Sturgeon is going to continue as First Minister. But what I would far rather see is a Scottish Parliament that's focused on recovery and rebuilding, not a referendum. So we have to stop that SNP majority, because that's the threat to recovery. I mean, just, uh, just, just, just what, six, seven, eight months ago, it looked like Jackson Carlow would be sitting in that seat during this election. Did you make a mistake with that coup to get rid of him? Jackson decided to stand down. He reflected on his time as leader and he took a very dignified stance to stand down. And I'm delighted to continue the work that Jackson started into this election. Do you think you're doing a better job than he would have? I think I am leading the Scottish Conservatives in this campaign with bold, imaginative ideas to take Scotland forward in our recovery. And I think that's the right thing. And I'm working with Jackson and I'm working with all our candidates across Scotland to get across that positive message to outline the policies we would take forward in a Scottish Parliament, but only if we have a Parliament focused on our recovery. You said a moment ago you do whatever the, the voters decide you should do. Well, in 2016, they decided you should be at the Scottish Parliament, but you didn't stay for long, did you? 
No, I sought election to my home constituency. I've you always ignored them then, then, didn't you? No, I was elected to the Scottish Parliament as a member for the Highlands and Islands, which included Murray. But I had an opportunity in 2017 to fight for the seat that I've been born in, grown up, and lived my entire life. And I was returned to the uh, seat you as MP. You don't want to be a dual mandate uh, MSP and MP. I, I, I was returned to the then. seat as MP for Murray in 2017, beating the SNP leader at Westminster. I was re-elected in 2019, but now I have an opportunity to continue to serve the people of Murray, but also to seek election as a Highlands and Islands List MSP. If the Tories slip from second to third place, would you still take up your seat in the Scottish Parliament or would you just stay at Westminster? Uh, well, I would absolutely take up my seat in the Scottish Parliament. But I think you'd stay on as leader I, if but that I, happened. I don't think either of those things are going to happen because the Scottish Labour Party have lost votes and lost seats every single election since devolution in 1999. People can see across Scotland there is one party challenging the SNP and that's the Scottish Conservatives. Back to policy. So far the SNP SNP, Labour, Greens and Lib Dems have pledged to double the Scottish child payment to £20 to help lift children out of poverty. Would you do the same? Yes, we've supported the introduction um, of uh, that policy and we would support uh, the increase as well. Because, you know, you've not got, as a party, a great record on free school meals in England. Some of your Scottish colleagues voted against that. You didn't, you, you missed that vote, I think, didn't you? Uh, no, I didn't take part in that vote because it was uh, for England only. But in the Scottish Parliament, our MSPs put forward the Scottish Conservative policy, which is to introduce free school meals and breakfasts here in Scotland. And the SNP MSPs abstained they in also... that vote when they had an opportunity to implement that policy here in Scotland now. Why did the SNP not support free school meals and breakfasts? in Scotland. Your MSPs also backed the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child and yet the UK government want to stop that in Scotland. And as we discussed in the debate last night, that's not the case. As you're aware, Colin, the UK government have said they support the principles of the bill. Our Quite. MSPs supported it at Holyrood. But if there is a legal issue that has to be tested, the Scotland Act of 1998 affords that opportunity to do so. Why are they taking the Scottish Parliament to court rather than just implementing the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child across the UK and protecting children right across the UK? Well, that Surely that would be the first thing that they would do that, rather than instantly going to court. That convention has been uh, introduced across the UK since 1991, but in terms of the specific act that was brought forward in the Scottish Parliament, the UK government offered amendments to the Scottish government that would have resolved these issues before we got to this stage. They weren't taken forward and now there's an opportunity to test the legal issues, the minor legal issues that have been identified. But why in, are you testing that rather than just passing the same law at Westminster to protect those kids right across the country? Because what the, the issue with the Scotland Act that's been passed is it adds... But that's technical. It, well, it is. It's but, 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 and it doesn't this, take this away from the principles. But the image that it presents is of the Conservatives being the nasty party and, and again, doesn't totally it? Wrong. It makes that, it look like you don't like kids. No, I mean, that's ridiculous, Colin, because our MSPs support it. The UK government have said they support the principles of the bill, but there is a legal issue they need to clarify, and they will do so that with, with that in the Supreme Court. Final question, your manifesto is coming very soon. Will a bridge or a tunnel between Scotland and Northern Ireland be in your manifesto? The, Boris Johnson wants it. This I know is, you said he didn't matter earlier on, but he maybe does on this. This is a manifesto to what we can do in the Scottish Parliament. It's an ambitious manifesto to recruit more teachers, invest in the NHS. What about a bridge or a tunnel broadband. to Northern there's, Ireland? Come I, on, I'm not, going to give, I'm not going to give too much away, but there's not going to be a, a, a comment on that because that's an issue for the UK government. I'm focused on what the Scottish government and the Scottish Parliament should be focused on, our recovery. Douglas Ross, thanks for joining us in Scotland tonight. Thank you.